So what about you, if you're, if you're doing that very sort of meticulous and, and standing on your feet all day, touching mm. up, mattifying and all of that stuff, do you not really want to be asked with doing your own makeup when you're on set or would mm. you still turn up in some makeup yourself? Um, I don't think I've ever turned up with no makeup. Right. I don't wear a lot of makeup, mm -hmm. um, but I've never turned up without any. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get you know, I can do my own makeup in ten minutes. The amount I'm going to wear will be the same, and I'll do it in ten minutes in the morning. So, what would you do typically? Uh, what would I do? Um, I put on a little bit of anything with a glow. Mm -hmm. I'm sort of obsessed with anything that says glow. Mm -hmm. I want to buy it or whatever. Yeah. So I put on a bit of glow, and I usually use. Um, a tinted moisturiser, something like that. I like, you know, Sunday Riley, I like that one, or, you know, BB cream. I don't really like a strong, I like the um, the Pericon no, foundation, foundation that works really well for me because mm -hmm. it's a bit yellow. Um, but I am using the Star, the Dior Star foundation at mm -hmm. the moment. I like that. So I put on a little bit of foundation and powder and a little bit of blush, a little bit of contouring under my chin. And you've got nothing to contour. <laughs> You're so slim. There's nothing to contour. Um, and then I just do yeah a bit of mascara and eyebrows. That's it. Yeah, your brows are very good. They're not so good because I've just suddenly got this fringe. But um, and I've got oh, a bit of I, I clocked your brows earlier. Yeah. They're good ones, aren't mm. they? Eyebrows are everything. Though, they right? are. They are. So what do you keep at home? That's just I notice you've got brushes over there. That's um, important, right? Because you don't want to be you know, yeah. dirty in your work brushes or dirty in yeah. your face with your work brushes no. or whatever. Everything, I keep all that separate. Yeah. And um, although this stuff, I mean, I've got my makeup bags and then stuff here, I've got some stuff that I'm kind of playing with or that, you know, I just haven't put in my kits. So I might play with it or I might use it on my friends, you know, who are my neighbours. Should we um, swap bit? seats so you can show me? Yeah. Let's swap seats. Um, what can I show you that is good? Well, actually, because we've got the cupboard there as well, which has probably got more in it, you see. I can show you exactly what's here, which yeah. is, I'm sure it's terribly unimpressive, but this is... What I like about working with actresses is that sometimes they give me great ideas. Yeah. You know, because they'll come and say, well, I really like this product and it's something I've never used before. So I love this. This is... Um, Dior's Lip Maximizer, do you like that? Mm -hmm. Yes, and um, I love, have you tried Dior Glow Maximizer? That's my favourite primer. Oh, I don't know that one. Well, you need to get it because you like glow. <laughs> so it's from that range. Uh -huh. It's the primer I use every day. It looks really nice on its own mm -hmm. with no foundation, but it also looks really nice under foundation. But it's a, a golden primer. Okay. Now, the thing is... It's not glittery. See, yeah, that was, that was one thing I was glittery. going to say, because I get really scared, because I, I love the thing, the glow thing, and... I get really scared because I, I want to use it at work sometimes to give a freshness or whatever, but I get really worried that it's going to kick. Yeah, it's going to knock the light back. Yes. Yeah. So I get panicky about that and then I, yeah. I, don't, I have to be very careful. I don't know about Glow Maximizer on film. I've not yeah. used it on film, but, but um, for every day. But it's, n it's not spangly, you know, it's not. Um, you yes. pump it out and you think, oh, oh it's pink and glittery, yes. but it actually, when you were written, it's gold and yeah. it's so fine, it's not glittery. But anyway, we and don't wear so that, But so that's, you're using this is just my lip things here, actually. Yeah. So my lips, um, even though it doesn't look like it, are really important to me. I use um, an eyebrow pencil. Oh. <laughs> this is um, Lingering Mac. Mm -hmm. And I just do a little line. Oh, oh wow. And it kind of, you know, it's like a tone. It's not really... Oh, yeah. Because I've got little lips. And, uh, yeah, it just looks like that's your actual lip line. Yeah. Gives an, a bit more of an edge. I can usually do it a bit better than that. Gives it a little tip. bit of an edge. Uh, it's really good, actually, to put an edge underneath uh -huh. to do that lower lip thing, but I don't like that on my face. But I have done it. I'm an actress. And uh, then I put the shimmer on just to give it a little bit of thing. It's very complicated just for one set of lips, but uh, I really love this. this is a chubby yeah, stick. The chubby sticks are good. And I love kind of any great thing. So that's my lips, my natural lip things. Mm -hmm. um, Tushy Claw, you know, mm -hmm. or any version of I really love. I love, um, this is my other makeup bag, which I would have done before the lips normally. What have I got in here? 
That's really nice. Mm -hmm. Enchanting. Love, I love these, and these have gone into my kit, is the hourglass ambient The ambient. Pads. So you're able to use ambient on film without I any kickback? I only use the, you know, they do the sparkly ones yes. and the non. I only use the non ones. Right. So I love, I think it's called ep ephemeral, and, and this is dim mm -hmm. and mood. And they're my three. And I, I find them really helpful just for diffusing and, you know, seeing your lights, they're really good. But. And are you using them on set all over or just on no, bones? Just on bones. Yeah. The, the pale one I quite not like to buff in for a bit of an eclat. Mm -hmm. And this is really good for warming up, even just like down the bridge of a nose or something. Mm -hmm. It's quite, they're quite handy. And I've got that palette with the yeah. three in, it's really yeah. good. That's a bit of eyebrow gel. Of course. Yeah, I like that brow gel, I use that. Lancome. Great mascara. Do you still think Lancome make the best mascaras? Lots um, of people do, don't they? I, I still like them. I mean, I, I don't think I've found, like, the, you know, it's like a kit, isn't it? Or it's like any makeup. You're always looking for the ultimate, the ultimate one, yeah. and they're always changing. But I do think that's good, and it doesn't fall down. I find mascara the most annoying of all products. Do you? Uh, well, I just it think annoying it's the, in what sense? I, I just think it's all mascaras across the board. They're the one product category that aren't good enough yet. <laughs> I feel yeah. like they should be better than they are. I don't yeah. think that there are any, there are none where I go, yes, that's exactly it. Mm. Yeah, but, yeah, but then what, what would you want them to do that they're not doing? Well, I, w I want one that, that, gives, <laughs> that gives loads of um, drama, but never smudges, for example, mm -hmm. that yeah. separates and thickens. You, what you do is you end up using two or three different mascaras to do different things quite often. Yeah. Um, I just want one that does it all, I'm being greedy. Always eyelash curlers. Yeah. And it's funny, you know, when I was younger and, you know, you know, looked, looked younger and better, I never wore mascara. I didn't really discover it for myself until, you know, maybe five years ago I started wow. wearing mascara. And now I really love it. I couldn't really think of ever not wearing it. So um, what do we have in here? Uh, this is um, nice. I, this is oh, Troy nice. Surratt stuff. Um, I love this. Lovely. It's a lovely rosy blush. It's really natural. It's gorgeous. This is um, obviously contour and highlight. Very nice. Oh, I've got that them is on. nice. I've got them on too. And I love this contour because it's really, really gentle. Yes. And at the moment, that's not the, orange. It's not orange and it's not too dark. And it's um, I think that's the only one that he has in his range at the moment. And it's really good because I really. I think the contouring thing, it's just gone out of control, hasn't what? it? I mean, really. And it's so ugly. I mean, it's, it looks so weird in the flesh as well. I yeah. understand it for film, yeah. because that's why it was invented, yeah. to, to see facial expression from far away in theatre, mm -hmm. and I get yeah. it. Yeah. But in real life, standing here like yeah. we're standing here, it looks really weird. It looks really weird, but also the fact that it's become something to do as part of your everyday makeup. Yeah, and screw that. It's, really but it's practicing. also very difficult to do. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, and when you get young kids who want to, you know, to learn this look, and it's just... It's just also, it just kind of, it makes me sad, because I think, really what, so eyeliner. now young women, when they wake up in the morning, have to change the shape of their head, basically. Yes. Yeah, no, everything, it's though. It's not about The shape of their head, yeah, the shape of your nose, and it's just, um, it, it's, it's too much. And it, but it's become, like, this the new tideline isn't it it used to be yeah. because people yeah. got their foundation the wrong color yeah. and now there's this like frame of yeah. dark there isn't a single makeup artist in this entire industry who doesn't oh, think that every yeah. like yeah. every makeup artist yeah. thinks that and most beauty journalists think that but it's, it's weird that it's like become enough. such a huge huge trend it's it? huge 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 although trend but a trend in what way you know because it's yeah. it's not that well, it's not a fashion, it's not mm. a directional thing, is yeah. it? It's a kind of correcting thing. Yeah. Yeah, weird. So, House of Glamdoll's correcting <laughs> wheel, yes? Yeah, they, they sent me that. Yes, they sent me that too. Do you like it? Well, you know, I find it really good for me. I don't use it, I don't use the, um, you can see that I've never mm -hmm. used the contouring. But these ones, I really find quite good because I'm quite dark under the eyes. <laughs> still but it, they've got quite a lot of pigment in them yeah so I I, th I think they're quite good quite heavy but they're good with an eye cream yeah and they've, I like the pigment in it yeah so I find that quite a handy thing so you're to diluting have. it down a little bit with, yeah, with eye cream, cream. Yeah. yeah 
Um, a little bit of Tom Ford going on. I love that, that glowy thing. See, really illuminating yeah, primer. Any kind yeah. of illuminating. I love these. These are the MAC Prep and Primes. I mean, again, I just think they're great. Yeah. And I think they're really great on set for... Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I don't use a lot of that when I'm actually doing makeup. A little bit. Or I do use that under... Um, Correct. Why? Because of flashback? No, no, just I, I like to have it on set and then I'll go in and um, use it really lightly to do touch-ups or a bit right. of illuminating. Right. Um, it gets me out of a lot of problems, you know. Um, and this too, I'll put this on top as well mm -hmm. as underneath. Yeah, that's a MAC Press and Prime Corrector. Mm. Highlighter, bright forecast. It's nice, it's a nice, it's got a little bit of peach in it, yeah. so it's really good for a bit of shadow. Yeah. Um, that is my lipstick if I wear Very it. Very on mascara, hourglass, lip oil is that? Yes. Yeah. Um, it's a nice Shurimura, I like the lipsticks. Yeah, so you look good in all the colours, I look really good. Yeah, down. I find that's something like that, if I'm going out, it's really nice with grey yeah, hair. I, you I know, look really like good. hell in that colour, but um, <laughs> I always envy people who can wear nice. like purples and maroons and stuff. And then makeup. So that's about, you know, as much as I, I probably wouldn't use it all, but that's... And then in the morning, you know, I get quite... I've got my own little regime, which is like a countdown. I like to put everything out. Uh -huh. And then I go through my makeup like what well, everybody does, but like a recipe. And I'm really pleased when it all goes back in the bag because I know that I'm really finished. I mm -hmm. kind of, I don't, okay, that's so cool. what, 10 minutes? Yes, 10 minutes. Absolutely. It wouldn't take more than 10 minutes. And would you touch up? throughout the day or is it done then? No, I would because I think that's one of the hazards of sitting in front of a makeup mirror a lot of the time. Right, is of that course, you're looking yeah. at yourself all the time. Yeah. And you're so tired and you know And you think God Or you've been out in the rain and, and you've been out and freezing. Yeah. And I think it parts of the people hands. around you. Yeah, no, I think that's I think right. it's quite important in a sort of I, I don't know, I think it's nice in a serving job that you you know, you look together and, you know, you're not sort of beaten down by yeah, no, you're the right. woes of the day, no, you're it right. sort of instills confidence, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, if you look like you've pulled yourself together. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. no, I get that. So how are you mm. looking after your skin? This must be, so what, um, oh, hang on, we're still skin, on skin is in that cupboard. This makeup, then? Well, this is kind this of... This is flirting with it. Yeah, no, I like it. No, this is like stuff that I used to use on myself, so okay. it's, it's relegated, you know, <laughs> to... <laughs> What's that? That was a little, that was a bit dark. That was a little contouring powder. I quite like that for a little bit of a perk up. Yeah. That's Orgasm really nice. illuminate, a bit of a classic. Um, brows. Always looking for new brow things. Always. I Is love... brow this. your thing? Um, I am obsessed with brows. I love plucking them. I love shaping them. You know, and I, I am one of those people who stare at my friends. Or as soon as a, a new actress is in the chair, I'll probably say, How do, do you, you mind? If yeah. I, um, so, uh, have you sh reshaped actresses' brows on many an occasion? Well, you know, um, giving them a good... Yeah, I mean, I, especially doing period, period films because actually the brows tell the story. Yeah. The brows have changed so much every decade. Yeah. It becomes quite difficult, you know, because, like, 20s, you know, they were so thin. And I remember for the getting the crowd ready, we started during the preparation for Hugo, we got the crowd in and all these poor girls came in and many, many of them had never, ever plucked their eyebrows. Wow. Ever. So you had to and they went pluck to... loads of brows into really thin, so you yeah. didn't knock them back with soap or no. anything like that, you no. took them out? No, because it wouldn't have lasted, it wouldn't have lasted like a 12 hour day on set yeah. and yeah. it would have looked like rubbish. Yeah. So, you know, we asked, you know, and, and they were really good, you know, they wanted to be in the film and they did it and... We had the leader cane out, God. just to kind of numb the pain. Yeah. But um, it was it was very very important. You know, it, it's an important detail. You do what you have to do. Yeah, and if you know, it would look too theatrical to mm. soap them or mm. spirit gum them or whatever. It just wouldn't look the same. So it's like even you know Gwen Stefani in The Aviator, mm -hmm. because she's got um, a retro look anyway. Mm -hmm. She was up for it, but she had her eyebrows. She Jean Harlow in it, yeah. She yeah. went for a really fine line. Yeah, so she had very arched, yeah. round. Yes, that's yeah. right. Hourglass mood, which is actually I, I like to use that as a sort of base for blusher if, it's oh, a, okay. if, if I'm going yeah. for that pinky. 
a base because it kind of you can do a little bit of general sculpting with it and then do a pop. Mm -hmm. um, bronzer. It's a bit of a classic that bronzer, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, aren't she pretty? <laughs> but I just thought, you know, I, was, I felt a bit inadequate, Sally, because I thought, well, because you're going to know about everything. And I thought, I'm just going to look at my stuff. This I really love though. And do you get sent a lot of stuff or do you go out no, and buy stuff? Sadly. <laughs> I don't. I was going to ask you about this because on film you're kind of, you're at the thick end of the craft in that you're not really the sort of, the glamorous. Yeah, exactly. Uh, people so they don't get paid your back, name. Really. No, yes. right. So, Which is what it's really about now. Yeah. Um, sometimes I do. I have to say in the States, if mm -hmm. I'm doing a film in the States, I will get a lot more and I will get, you know, um, really nice things to try out, which doesn't happen here. Mm -hmm. um, some sometimes people are, are quite generous, but I don't really get sent stuff. You know, Mac is a great supporter of the film industry, yeah. so they're always like they'll do it the next day, anything to help out. They're really good. Um, I got a lovely uh, from Troy Surratt actually. He kind of tracked me down on Instagram oh, wow. be because of Carol, uh -huh. and I was so touched because he sent me. He tracked oh, me down and. He sent me just such a lovely personal email because he loved the makeup so much and so he very kindly sent me some gorgeous things. I don't often have the time to sort of ask around, but, mm. then, but then I will, just because also I have to work to a budget. Mm -hmm. So if I can get stuff for nothing, it's it helps. And makeup is so expensive. It's so expensive. And you know, yeah. everybody has their own makeup bag, so it's going to be new stuff. So it really mounts up and I have to negotiate the whole budget as well. So, so what do you do? You pull together a little kit for Kate mm -hmm. and her role and a little kit for Gwen Stefani and her role or whatever. Yeah. Okay, so that's what we did when I was assisting. If um, So 25 years ago when I was an assistant makeup mm -hmm. artist, we used to, um, if we were going on tour, I would have to go to Screen Face and I would have to buy 40 kits for the yeah. dancers mm -hmm. because you couldn't do all the dances yeah. so they you know you'd have a nude lipstick a red lipstick a mm -hmm. whatever brow gel and about 10 products so that's what you're doing for the roles yes so everyone has their own little bag so it's close to hand yes so it's close to hand and they've got everything in it and then you just actually you know i usually have doubles so i'll have everything on my place right. to do it and then i'll have double in the bag so that if i'm really up against time i don't have to start right packing up my kit to go on set so i'll have everything ready in my mm -hmm. set bag um to do touch-ups for the day right and and so every every actor gets their own named bag so it's all hygienic and good to go and then you know maybe sometimes not you know, if a makeup artist is ill, you have to stand in, all their stuff is ready and it's all set in the bag, you know, with, wow. the, with the notes. If you had to step in for a day. Uh -huh. So if, if you got ill, sick, it would yeah, be... I know. Yeah. God. <laughs> you cannot get ill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it is, it's, it's, you know, it's, a, it's not a great position to be in to take over. I mean, I don't like it. I don't, no. I've done, you know. That's quite um, hardcore, isn't it's, it? It's very hardcore because, you, you know, you just feel can't possibly, you know, do the same. Which of course you can, but yeah. it's very nerve-wracking. Yeah. And also, you know, because it's a relationship, people get used to each other. Mm. So that's a lot of money then. If you've, yeah, if you've got these it's doubles, a lot of money. Mm -hmm. you've got your full kit out, you've got little bags of everything again for them, then presumably there are some products you're going to run out of and you're going to need to replace yeah. during shooting. So, I mean, you could spend thousands on Product. Could and do, yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, you've got skincare, you know. Right. Skincare. So are you doing a little facial every morning on the actors? Little facial. You know, again, you know, there isn't really time. I will do um, a little bit if I can. Or, you know, if somebody comes in and they've had a really hard night, mm -hmm. I'll say, right, okay, you need to have a mask. We just need to. And I'll, I'll, sell, I'll say to the second assistant uh, straight away or send them a text and say, 15 minutes over today mm -hmm. so that they know from mm -hmm. the outset and maybe just have to do you know I keep face masks in the fridge or whatever and iPads and you might just have to do a little bit extra and just a little bit of waking up of the face and trying to drain it a little bit yeah whatever. yeah kind of wipe out the hangover <laughs> yes that kind of thing is that yeah kind of God, I mean, it's such a massive organisational job. I think it that's is. What a lot people of people don't realise it. And there's a lot of paperwork, even just, you know, because you're responsible for the budget, you have to, you're responsible for um, the numbers of makeup artists you're going to use, because that is then had got to be budgeted into the line producer budget. So there's, you know, on a big production, there's always talk about how can we, you know, 
can we reduce the numbers more? Ag, you know, do you really mm. need that amount of people? Mm -hmm. And it's about you know getting the job done. And you're in charge of hair as well, so you've got hairdressers under um, you, have you? Not really, no. Um, some jobs, I mean, most jobs, they tend to you to book makeup first, and they used to. Um, some jobs, hair will be under the jurisdiction of makeup, mm -hmm. but usually on a, a feature film, you've got the makeup department and the hair department. So well, there's a bit less to worry about. It's less, yeah. yeah. And on a, on a big job, I wouldn't take on hair. So uh, if, if like I was the designing, so you're just going to oh, do no, faces because it's too much. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you would. You'd lose it's it. It's impossible, actually. Yeah. yeah. And it just takes too long. So, um, yeah. This we were still looking at this. This I really love. This is the Serge Luton. Mm -hmm. Do you like their eyeshadows? Yeah, you I was looking. Um, I was looking online and I found an interview with you when I was researching yeah. and it linked to Serge Luton yeah. and Fisher Sado. When I was at art college, you know, doing the art makeups, that's what I really loved um, was those, um, the ads that he did for Shiseido. Yeah. I just thought they were so... Kind of iconic, quite Yeah, they? so yeah. beautiful. So that was kind of my inspiration. That's beautiful. And then it's a really, really great palette and it's gorgeous um, quality. Yeah. yeah, beautiful eyeshadows. I always have that. Yeah, in my so kit. Day. I'm always so good at formula. And um, yeah, yeah, that's lovely. Nothing, nothing special. These are just like brushes and things. A bit of Sisley. Bobby Brown, of course, you can't go wrong for the news. We often find when we're doing the bathrooms that the makeup artists themselves on their own faces tend to use lots of bobby because it's, yeah, kind of it's very good every day. It really is, yeah. And yeah, that's, very, that's my that's my lovely um, <laughs> samples. Well, these are all samples which I never used to. You know, I I, I used to hate samples. Yeah, I, know I used to. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I used to hate it. I used to refuse them, and now because I sort of go away a lot for a couple of days and I try and have hand, no hand luggage, yeah. I be, because of the restrictions on That's liquids, true. they've suddenly you know, taken over my life and I really love them and I've sort of turned around and I use samples all the time and I just think, okay, I'm going to use them and I won't have my normal skincare, but I can also sort of check out yeah. other brands quite good. Yeah, yeah, so where do you get them? Do you pick them well, up in Space and K or whatever? Um, just when I buy stuff, so, or when I buy stuff I get extra samples, so I love Sunday Riley. Yeah, I do too. So I'm very happy to get those. I haven't ever tried that. It's a bit of Clarence there. That's quite good, Dr. C. But I can yeah. see eye cream, it's really brilliant. Yeah, eye cream is ideal for something that size, isn't it? Look at that little bioderma. Is that not that is really cute though, isn't it? Do you it? use bioderma a lot on sets of fixing um, things? I do. I love yeah. I use it on myself as well. Yeah. So I was very happy because I actually used one of those this week mm -hmm. when I was travelling. I can see I can see Sisley. your point though, if you're flying all the time. It's really good. I tried oh, it's a great mask. Yeah, you see it's it's fantastic because if you're going away for two days, yeah. you don't have to check your luggage in. Yeah. Even like the little tiny Lemur. Do you get terrors about your kit going missing? My kit has gone missing. So, yes, on Orlando, um, we'd been filming in Russia and uh, we came back to film in a stately home. First day on the, in the schedule with Quentin Chris playing Elizabeth I and the kits didn't arrive, nothing arrived. So luckily I had my brushes because I never send them ahead of me. And So you would always put those in your in bag? My, in my own personal day. luggage, yeah. And... Um, they opened Boots the Chemist. I can't remember where we were. We were out of London somewhere at Stately Home. So in the little town, they opened Boots the Chemist at, I think, seven o'clock for me. Wow. And I went and bought, I mean, and you're talking about 1990. So it wasn't like Boots the Chemist as it is now. Also, um, if it's a little regional one, yeah. what they're going to have, a bit of bourgeois, yeah. you know. And um, yeah, I can't remember. I think it might have been Boots number seven. So I just bought what I, what was there and made it work. Wow. Which, but that's actually, I, th I like, I quite like that as a discipline because there's so much stuff now, you know, isn't there? Masses. Yeah, too, yeah So, too much. and being good isn't about masses of stuff. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. So we're in a pinch, you know, and I always say this if I'm doing like a talk or anything, it's really good to try and do whatever makeup you want, just going back to very few products yeah. and your palettes. Yeah. And see if you can do the makeup like that. Just as a point, it's sort of like doing a painting, you know. And I suppose because it was his first day on set, there was no continuity to worry no about. There was no continuity, yeah, that was a good that thing. That would have screwed you, I suppose. It was. But then, you know, I carried on, I didn't change it. When, yeah. when the makeup so did you kept, arrive. So you kept your number seven. Yeah, I'd keep you had that to. makeup. Yeah. yeah. 
How funny. So you had your little funny kind of boots kit and that had to go through the rest of the film. Yeah. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I love that. So these mm. are all your masks. But this is all my samples. So you're flying with yes. these. But, um, so this isn't the skincare that I normally use. Which yeah. Is in that cupboard there. So skincare, what I tend to do is I use leftovers mm -hmm. from films. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, of course, I've got a lot of SK2. Kate. Kate. Yes, Kate Blanchett uses yeah. SK2. Face of SK2. And, but I do really love it. Have you yeah, it's tried great. it? I really love oh, yeah, it. No, and great. it works really well for my skin. So I've used that. And what else I've got? I use Bioderma to clean. I love doing um, little peel, little, mm -hmm. you know, always exfoliate. I think it's like the most important. You're a glow junkie. Yeah, and also just exfoliating, you know, for film is really important, just to yeah. get so that the makeup isn't sitting on top yeah. of the skin rather. And in HD, you can see every flake. Yes, you? exactly. Yeah. So, and this actually, do you know this? No. This is my new favorite thing. Rex my, I mean, line. Yeah, what is literally it? from a few days though, Sally. It's my new favorite thing. I, I was in Paris last week and I went to that, you know, the big cup prize pharmacy? Yeah. So I went there and I got my usual bioderma and homeoplasmin and everything. And I looked around and thought, I'm going to look around for new products that are French mm -hmm. that I don't think I can get. And I spoke to one of the girls there and um, she, you know, I said, well, what's that? And she said, yeah, it's French. And she said, it's really good. And I kind of read a bit about it. It's, what is it? Well, it's just, a, it, this is Hydroshock. It's a mask, hydrating mask mm -hmm. with loads of hyaluronic acid mm -hmm. in it. And I just think it's brilliant. Sounds like my bag. No, but really it's brilliant. You can use it seven days in a row. You put it on for 15 minutes and wash it off. Or you can put it on before you go to sleep at night mm -hmm. and keep it you on. Just sleep in it. And I just put it on and I just absolutely love the way my skin looks. I just love it. And I told oh, my, my friend who's next door, um, I said, you've got to try Rexon. So she went out and bought it. She bought this and now she's gone out and bought the moisturiser and the eye cream and she's just... I'm all over no, it. No, really, honestly, I think it's... I'm going to get some. It's my sure. new thing. You watch. So, um, what else? Well, you know, have a bit. Oh, this I really liked. And this is, you know, not an expensive thing. Um, I might have put this away, the other thing away. I bought these by Embryolise because yeah. they went into that sort of make, they've gone into sort of makeup yeah. thing. And I like the the glow thing, the Eclat Elixir mm -hmm. under the makeup. I've been trying that, which I really love. And this is another thing from there, which is um, a night cream, which is after slightly, KM. Yeah, it's like slightly glycolic. Which and is are you gorgeous. somebody who looks after your skin quite, I mean, you look like you do. Mm. Um, but quite religiously, you must yeah. have such long days on set. You're always coming yeah. home and cleaning it properly. And yeah, always, always. And um, yeah, always. And I always like dedicate my Sunday morning to, you know, mm. face masks, exfoliating masks. Then I put on, you know, I'll do like three different ones and just do it all just for that one day a week. Wow. But um, and which product is there a skincare product you just couldn't live without? Mm. That you that you've carried on using for a long time that you don't replace. Mm. I suppose SK two is the constant. Yeah, it has been. A, yeah, that's been a constant. So and um, mm. trying to see if there's some. I don't know. I mean, I love like little things. You know, I, I really love some Mario Badescu. Oh, drawing lotion. lotion is great. It's really fantastic. Yeah, and it I, does I, really work. It really does work, and I've got that. For, I mean, I like all. I like Doctor Hashka actually. Yeah. You know, I think that's a really good thing. And I, it's also good just for films to have things that aren't um, inaccessible. Again, if you mm. lose stuff that you might be able to pick up in an airport. Yeah. Even for continuity. Yeah. Yeah, so, something you can get in any airport. I can yeah. see why you would look for that. If you're in a jam or something hasn't arrived. We, um, so this is all your personal stuff. Mm -hmm. I really want to look at your kit, I know you've got lots of, there's so much of it, you have lots of it tucked away, but the Zuka we've been sitting on and another mm -hmm. Zuka are the things that you have to have in your house because they're like yeah, the bare bones it's, of your yeah, kit. Yeah, and also I just wouldn't relegate them to my storeroom. The, the things in the storeroom are things like, you know, bald caps and, you know, wounds and, you know, all the bowls and the big cumbersome things and beards and stuff like yeah. that. Whereas this, because it's lovely, you know, also, um, I just, I couldn't bear to the thought of losing it and I just think it's better off in this environment. Really. So I think that's what we'll do. We will get the Zookas out and delve into Morax kit in the other room and we'll see you next time for the professional kit. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.